Welcome to Physics 2212 Lab 3, Magnetic Field of a Bar Magnet. In this investigation, the dependence of distance for a magnetic field of a small bar magnet was investigated by measuring the on-axis and off-axis magnetic fields using the Biot-Savart law. Then, vPython was used to computationally model the magnetic field of the bar magnet, and the simulated model was compared to the experimental values. The Biot-Savart law is the major key concept for this lab. This law relates the magnetic field produced by an object at an observation point to the conventional current I and the distance R between the object and the observation point. The magnetic field for a small section DL is shown. Far from a loop with current I and on the line passing through the loop center, the magnetic field is similar to the magnetic field of a dipole on the dipole axis. This magnetic field is related to the distance and the magnetic dipole moment, which is the product of product of the object's area and current. The magnetic field for a magnetic dipole on the perpendicular axis is one half of the on-axis magnetic field. The magnetic field of a bar magnet is also equivalent to the product of k and the distance r to the end power, where k is a combination of magnetic constants. Finally, this lab uses the equation shown at the bottom of the slide as a general formula for the magnetic field of a magnetic dipole as this equation is more accurate in detailing the magnetic dipole. Here is a visual concept of the magnetic field of the bar magnet. Notice that the magnetic field goes from south to north pole and curls around to the south, around to the south pole. The system is the observation point or the magnetometer and the surroundings is the bar magnet. Here is the procedure for the lab. The materials include a bar magnet and magnetometer. Each bolted section after the material section contains a series of steps that were conducted to calibrate the magnetometer for measurement, find the magnetometer chip in the phone, and collect data on magnetic fields at different distances, including the on-axis and off-axis measurements. Here are the results of the experimental portion of the lab. Note the line of regression and the decreasing distance between the magnet and the magnetometer as the magnetic field increases. Also, note the off-axis magnetic field measurements at the bottom of the slide. Using the top equation as a general equation for the line of regression, the values for n and k were determined. The equation for a bar magnet with the variable k and the Biot-Savart law for a magnetic dipole was then set up as an equation to solve for the magnetic dipole moment. The two main observations from the experimental portion of the lab are noted here. Importantly, the magnetic field increases as the distance between the magnet and observation point decreases. Now to the computational model. Here are the constants for the computational model as well as the function for calculating the magnetic field. Note that the general formula for the magnetic field of a magnetic dipole is used here. Here's the code for scaling and drawing the arrows of the magnetic field of the bar magnet, which includes the locations of the arrows and what they represent, or the axis. Here's the code for calculating the off-axis magnetic field and the corresponding magnetic field arrow. Here are the vPython results, including the simulated magnetic fields. As stated, the distance between the magnet and the observation point decreases as the magnetic field increases. Furthermore, the magnetic dipole moment was determined to be 1.49 to the negative 5 amperes meters squared. There is also a 86% difference between the magnitude of the experimental magnetic field and the simulated magnetic field. This discrepancy could be due to a number of possible errors. These errors include other sources of magnetic fields such as nearby light poles, inconsistent placement of the phone magnetometer, surface inconsistency, measurement error from the magnetometer, and measurement errors from measuring the distances between the magnetometer and the magnet. If magnetic north was not compensated for, the measured magnetic fields would differ wildly from the magnetic fields with compensation. Both the x component and y component of the magnetic field would differ, as magnetic north would influence both axes depending on the orientation of the magnetometer. Due to the consistency of the magnetometer being flat on the surface, the z component of the magnetic field should be consistent. If two identical bar magnets were stuck together, the resulting magnetic field would be greater than the magnetic field of one bar magnet. We would expect this increase in the magnetic field to be twofold due to superposition, though experimental data is needed to confirm this hypothesis. The increased strength of the magnet means that to get the same magnetic field, the distance between the magnet and the observation point would decrease. 